Hello. Today we're going to talk about register and genre. Let me remind you about the notion of functional grammar. So what's special about functional grammar? As we know, in this type of grammar, we do not only focus on text, but we also pay attention to context. And the role of context here is very paramount. It is very crucial in functional grammar. So we try to see how text is interpreted in relation to the context. And if text is the language we use, context is the settings or the situation that contributes to the meaning of the language that we use. Now let me give you a proof that context can contribute to the meaning of the language that we use. For example, if you're having a birthday party and then you're going to invite your best friend, the language that you'll use to invite your best friend via a phone call, for example, would be different from the language that you use to invite your boss. So if you're inviting two different persons, namely your best friend and also your boss, you might use two different language, two different style of language. And that proves that context will influence the style of your language or the type of your language. Now context in functional grammar is analyzed through register and genre. So the terms register and genre are uh, used to study context. What is the relationship between register and genre? So genre is register plus communicative purpose. So genre is register plus communicative purpose. Thompson in his book uses this analogy to illustrate the relationship between register and genre. So register is seen as clouds. So register is illustrated as clouds. And then genre is seen as garment. So here we can see that genre has a certain function. Genre has a certain purpose. Uh, while register, it can be further processed to make genre, to make a genre. So genre is made of register plus the purpose or the function. Now you might remember that in functional grammar, there are three or four dimensions of meaning. So the first one you have experiential, and then the second one you have interpersonal, and then the third one you have textual, and the last one you have logical. Those are meaning in functional grammar. They are also called as metafunctions. Now let's focus on those dimensions of meaning. We can use the concept of register as a study of context to relate to those metafunctions. But before that, let me give you the definition of register. As you can read on the screen, register is the variation according to use. That is, we typically use certain recognizable configurations of linguistic resources in certain contexts. So that is the definition of register according to Halliday in Thompson, 2014. So from here we can see that register is the study of context that can be determined through these three aspects. The first one is field. So field is the topic or the content or the subject matter of the text or the language that we use or the conversation that we have. And that is field. And field is related to the experiential meaning. So we try to 
study the topic or the content or the subject matter of the language and it means that we are trying to see the experiential meaning and then the second one we have the tenor so tenor is the relationship of participants it means that we are trying to see the interlocutors of a text or a conversation or we try to see who the writer and the reader might be when we are talking about written text and that is tenor so tenor is the relationship of participants and it is related to the interpersonal meaning when we try to see the tenor of the context it means that we try to uh, identify the interpersonal meaning and then the third one we have the mode mode is the channel of communication so it's related to how the messages or how the language is delivered and when we're talking about the mode it means that we're talking about the textual meaning we're trying to see the context in terms of the textual meaning So here's the example of how we analyze register of the language that we use. For instance, when we return to the previous example, when we invite our best friend to our birthday party, it means that the field, the topic of the conversation or of the text is birthday party. And then the tenor is between friends because it's between us and our best friend. So the tenor is between friends. And then what about the mode? The mode is spoken communication because we talk via phone call. So we can say that the mode is spoken via phone call. That is the mode. Now let's talk about genre. What is meant by genre? Genre is register plus communicative purpose. That is, it includes the more general idea of what the interactants are doing through language and how they organize the language event, typically in recognizable stages, in order to achieve that purpose. So the keyword here is recognizable stages. And then the second definition, a genre deploys the resources of a register or more than one register in particular patterns to achieve certain communicative goals. The second keyword that we have here is patterns. So a genre usually has recognizable stages or it also has patterns. These are some examples of genre. We have recipe or personal letter or advertisement, police report, student essay, formal letter, uh, news item, and so on. So those are the examples of genre. And then in the right column, we can see that genre is quite related to the text types so for example we have recipe here it has the text type of a procedure right but in some cases genre and text types can be used interchangeably so you might you might identify the genre of a text with the text type a text can be seen as a recipe or a procedure they can be used interchangeably now let's take an example of the genre of recipe so here on the left we have an example of the text of the recipe and then from this text we can identify the genre by looking at the stages of the text for example here in the first line of the text we have the title and then 
we have the hook in the second line and then in the third line we have practical details and then as we usually have in the recipe we have the ingredients as the next stage or the next component of a recipe and then we have the instructions here and then the nutrition details and lastly we have helpful tips so those are the stages of a recipe of course different texts might have different stages and it means that different texts might have different genres that's all I need to talk about register and genre I hope that you understand what is meant by both terms now for the homework please find an example of text it can be spoken text or written text and then try to analyze the text in terms of its context and it means that you're gonna have to analyze the text in terms of the register and genre if you have any question feel free to write your question in the comment section oh, we can still have fun for